The doom and gloom about television ratings might feel inescapable sometimes, but there are still some surprising stories going on in linear TV. What channels are actually seeing explosive gains in viewership this year? Who's held on against the odds? And of course, what is the lowest rated TV channel of 2023? I'm Benzie Johnson Jr., I'm enthusiastic about television, and I'm going to crunch the numbers for you. Every year it gets a little harder for me to make this video. As something of an old-fashioned kind of viewer, it's hard to watch as linear viewership continues its downward trend and no concrete solution arises to serve as a replacement that delivers the best experience for audiences. Not to mention that there's no clear-cut way to adequately measure audiences as viewing options further splinter. While some streaming services have made tiny moves this year to offer some idea of the data that drives their nebulous decision-making, it still doesn't match up to the Nielsen numbers linear television enjoys and the transparency and objectivity they offer. So, let's have a look at them. Nielsen's tally of 2023's average television network ratings based on the traditional broadcast primetime scheduling hours. The major broadcast networks are always first and always biggest in the rundown, and in that category, NBC maintains its perch as the number one broadcast network after narrowly clinching the crown by a few thousand viewers last year. Though they haven't opened up a comfortable lead just yet, the Peacock's 4,537,000 viewers is just 29,000 viewers ahead of second place CBS at 4,508,000, keeping the eye on their tails for the second year in a row. Between Super Bowl 58 on CBS and NBC hyping up the Paris Olympics, 2024's averages could still prove a toss-up. ABC has just barely pulled off a positive gain this year, up to 3.888 million viewers. Staying effectively flat is good enough for broadcaster boardrooms these days, though they're probably even happier at Fox, which added 120,000 viewers to its average this year to land at 3,353,000, stopping three straight years of double-digit slides. The CW, fresh from being mostly sold to Nexstar, falls to 453,000 viewers, and Ion Television, recently acquired by Scripps, manages 997,000 viewers for its procedural reruns, seemingly through sheer willpower alone. MeTV remains the largest multicast era broadcast channel at 631,000, though you have to wonder if it's plateauing. There's still growth in that space, though. Mail Skewing Grit zeroed in on Westerns and raffled up 513,000 viewers in 2023, up an impressive 18%, its fifth straight year of growth in a row, and its largest yet. Cable television reaches a gloomy milestone this year. No entertainment channel now rates higher than 1 million viewers. HGTV remains on top of the hill this year, and closest to the seven-figure mark, an average of 943,000 viewers. Sibling from a distant corporate arm, TNT, stays steadier than the rest to land in second at 938,000 viewers, perhaps lining up for an overtake next year. Hallmark Channel shed over 100,000 viewers this year, the crown slipping down to 929,000. TBS is also down a tenth to 725,000, and Discovery Channel is facing some disinterest as it takes its third straight dip over 10%, and it's worst yet, catching 702,000 viewers. Elsewhere in the pile, Lifetime plunges to 443,000 viewers, a 25% drop in its audience. Paramount Network falls off a cliff with that signature hit Yellowstone, diving 30% to 346,000, though its basic premium rivals at FX at 389,000 and AMC at 369,000 aren't faring that much better. MTV, now more the Catfish Channel than the Ridiculousness Network, stands at 256,000 this year, though at least it's pipped Freeform's 254,000 due to them taking a bigger hit. Chip and Joanna Gaines' discovery venture, Magnolia Network, is perhaps now a fixer-upper itself at 170,000 viewers, down 16% from the 203,000 it had last year, and now ranking lower than the channel space's last full year in its previous guise as DIY Network, 179,000 in 2021. After having its hefty content slate stripped from it over the course of the past two years and unharmoniously plopped onto MTV, VH1 crares down to 154,000 viewers, down to 36%, as if we needed a lesson in how important well-scheduled, well-promoted original programming is to a television channel. Among the more unusual stories in cable this year is the relative rise of Reels Channel by 34% to 357,000 viewers, now solidly a mid-range cable channel after doubling its audience in 2022. Once a forgettable runt focused on celebrity stargazing, the channel's found its recent success exploring Hollywood and pop culture scandals. 
And speaking of dirty laundry, the channel's profile has particularly exploded thanks to taking on police observational series other channels won't touch anymore. Given how they tend to distort and even glorify the actions of police at a time when police conduct and misconduct is under the highest scrutiny it's ever been. Reels picked up reruns of Cops in June 2022. It was cancelled by its home of seven years Paramount Network in 2020, but was still produced for international markets until it was taken on by Fox Nation, the streaming service of right-wing trash pile Fox News Channel in late 2021. And that July, they launched On Patrol Live, a spiritual successor to A&E's Live PD. Cancelled by that network in June 2020 in the wake of racial justice protests and the revelation that the show itself had deleted footage of a police killing from 2019. Produced by the same company and featuring many of the same talent, a and &E is currently pursuing a lawsuit over potential copyright infringement. Seeing a less controversial boom this year is Great American Family, up by 76% to 139,000. Previously, Great American Country, a niche country music turned southern lifestyle channel owned by Discovery, the channel was acquired in 2021 by Private Equity and a former Hallmark Channel executive, and transformed into yet another religion-adjacent wholesome, family-oriented channel, in the same vein as such outlets as Up TV, and prior to its Westerns pivot a few years ago, INSP, and plenty of others over the years. Kids TV continues to be a challenging demographic to cater to, and this year the traditional channels of the genre fell into a dangerous place, each slipping below an average of 200,000 viewers. Given these channels have limited hours or limited demographic interest during the evening time slots these numbers cover, it's harder to tell whether these numbers are an accurate representation of where these channels are. But combined with other data, such as premiere ratings and total day averages available elsewhere, they give a solid foundation to work from. Still leading the genre is Nickelodeon, though they've lost 97,000 viewers, a crushing 34% of their audience, putting them at just 190,000 viewers. Cartoon Network is a resilient one this year, down 19% to 146,000, and Disney Channel sits third, down 26% to 132,000. It could be argued that it's been something of a soft year for Nick, sliding back into old patterns and lacking a standout premiere to headline the year, though their continuing series are still strong. Cartoon Arc somehow manages to be in a worse position every time I come back to this, now airing only 11 hours a day, and yet doesn't seem to have entirely collapsed by these numbers. That may be happening, given other data sources put its total viewership for most of this year under 100,000 and falling. It'll be something to keep an eye on, as CN starts its first full year as a mornings and afternoons only service. We haven't seen any signs Disney Channel is in poor shape in terms of the effort put into it, quite the opposite I'd argue, but the ratings dip is still cause for concern. They pulled the plug on Disney XD at higher levels in 2018. Among Kids TV's littler siblings, Nicktoons is down to 58,000 viewers, with Teen Nick up to 51,000, a knowable, if not meaningful, 8,000 viewer jump. Boomerang is down just over a fifth to 41,000 as it returns to largely being a classic service. And Disney XD plummeted by 40% to 32,000 viewers, though that huge drop is likely an effect of Spectrum, the US's largest cable service, dropping the channel, among others like Freeform, when it renegotiated its carriage deal with Disney in the fall. It was the first time the usual protracted games of hardball between broadcasters and platforms has resulted in this kind of huge loss in the channels actually available to viewers, and as much as Disney XD has become a little more than a second-run home for Disney Channel cartoons in recent years, I imagine it makes Spectrum less attractive for those looking for kids' TV. Near the bottom, Discovery Family is down from 38,000 to 28,000 this year, and Universal Kids slips from 23,000 to 21,000. In the nearby segment of Kids TV timeshares and spinoffs, Adult Swim is down to 217,000. Nick at Night sits at 245,000, which brings up the thorny possibility that reruns of Mom and Friends just might be keeping the whole channel space afloat. TV Land still rates much better than it at 467,000, so there's still a case for shuffling the block off of this moral airspace. But what should probably be headed there sooner? What is the lowest rated TV channel of 2023? Comedy.tv is up to 7,000, so it's not them, and 2021 lowest B in sports stays stubbornly at 3,000. Last year's dead last, the revival of G4, no longer exists. In 153rd position, seeing an average of 2,000 viewers, the lowest rated TV channel in 2023 is... 
a Spanish-language discovery offshoot named Hogar de HGTV, launched in mid-2020 and featuring dubbed content from the catalogs of HGTV and Food Network. It's a newer bit player in the range of offerings for Spanish-language cable tiers. Due to their more limited audience appeal and the extra steps or costs that often come with ordering these often separate services, many of these channels don't rate too well. That said, Spanish language broadcasting in the US is an interesting story and landscape in itself, and it would make for some good exploration sometime. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more analysis like this. You can see how things have changed by checking out the 2022 Ratings Averages Roundup up here or down in the description. You can support these videos directly for as little as 3 bucks a month at benjj.tk join. I'll see you next time.